this other young lady, 10 year old Mackenzie. God, we're lifting her up to you right now. And we're believing for the miracle to fall, God. Lord, there is a name that's above cancer, the name of Jesus. And the Bible said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess. And God, I pray you make that cancer bow and make it confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God, we're believing right now for healing. Cancer has to go. It has to flee. Cancer was nailed on the cross 2,000 years ago. He was defeated. Lord, he was defeated. And I pray, bless you, your baby. God, that you would do for her, for him, whoever he is. You have to do that. You have to want that. 
I told us as individuals, and I feel like God has something this morning that He wants to release. Come on, bro. That God's wanting to do. Yeah. What is it, brother? His mercy. His mercies are renewed every morning. His grace is sufficient. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to share a quick scripture with you this morning. Hallelujah be to God. But if you have a need, don't sit back there. Amen. You turn loose. This altar is always open. If in the middle of my preaching in a moment, if in the middle of it you feel led to come to this altar, you come. Amen. Don't hold back. Don't quench the Spirit of God. Oh, my. I told you this a little bit ago. This is Pentecost Sunday, and I thank God. I'm happy. Yeah. Happy, 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 as the, the old duck commander used to say. Happy in the Lord. Is anybody else happy this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Stand all over your feet, if you will. Gear, grab your Bibles as you're standing, and turn with me to John, John's Gospel, chapter number 14. John, chapter number 14. Praise the Lord. We're going to read something real fast, and then I'll let you be back seated. John's Gospel, chapter number 14. And I'm going to say we'll pick up reading in about verse number 11. John 14 and 11. Have you found the place? Amen. 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 All right. John 14, verse 11. This is what the Bible said. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Yeah. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Yes. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. And this is where I'm trying to get to. And I will pray the Father. And he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. I wish you'd look at your neighbor and say, I know who I know him. I know who he is. The sweet Holy Ghost of God. I know him. Amen. He said, because the world, they neither see him nor know him, but you know him. For he dwells with you, and get this, and will be in you. In you. All right. Let me read on down. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer in the world will see me no more. This is Jesus talking. But you will see me. Because I live, you can live also. You will live also. At that day you will know that I am in my Father. And you in me. And I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me. And who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. Woo. Verse 22. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself in us or to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said, if anyone loves me, he's going to keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him, our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all things that I have said to you. And I'm going to go on down to verse number 30. I'm skipping one of the better verses, verse 27 which is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. But let's go down to verse number 30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. 
But the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. Let, can we pray just a moment before we go any further? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to just go ahead and give you praise for the healings, for the, the moves. Lord, whatever you are doing this morning, I thank you for it. We praise you for it. Lord God, don't ever let us get to think this is an ordinary thing. Lord God, we never want to think that this is just, just something that just happens because we show up here. God, this is not just for us. God, this is you. God, and you're moving right now. And, and your move might not always be here. So may we never forget and may we never stop to be ever grateful and thankful for what you are doing. Lord, you have stopped by prospect this morning. And we pray you continue, Lord. You continue to meet with us here, Lord. We just want to give you praise. God, as we read your spirit, your scripture now, God, I pray that you would anoint us with the spirit and with power to preach this word with boldness and clarity. Anoint the ears of the hearers to hear, God, what the spirit is saying to the church. We promise to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Can you give the Lord praise while you're being seated? Hallelujah. Quiet this morning. My goodness gracious. Did we stay up too late last night? My, my. I know I did. I stayed up about 2.30 in the morning. And I was just, oh man. I went outside. I was reading my Bible for the last four or five hours out there. We got a new swing. Woo, it's nice. You get out there. That swing has got seats that recline. And I lit me a little candle out there, Brother Mike. And I took my Bible and a little flashlight. And I was outside just to go into town. About 2.30 this morning. And Sonny come in and she's like, don't you think it's time we go to bed? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I tell you what, God's word is so good. Amen. My. Amen. I, I saw God all week long and I want to talk to you with what God's laid on my heart this morning. About, you know, a lot of times we, we read the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. We'll read Acts chapter 2 and we might hit on one verse there. And we talk about usually what the disciples seen on the day of Pentecost, what the disciples felt. But I want to look at it from a different standpoint this morning, if that be all right. I told Sonny last night, I guess I'm backwards or something. Brother Reese tells me that quite often. You're backwards, and, and, and sometimes I agree with her. But, but anyways, I want to preach this morning from the standpoint what the devil saw on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Amen. Woo! Come on. What the devil saw on the day of Pentecost. Now, first of all, let me tell you what Pentecost means. Pentecost, when, when we say that, it has been indoctrinated into people's minds, especially those that are, are not Pentecostal. Usually the, any other that does not know the Pentecostal meaning, they think, well, Pentecost is just only Pentecostal people, moves of God. But Pentecost has been around for a long, long time. You can look it up in the book of Leviticus. Well, I'll give you the scripture in a moment. It's in Leviticus where it talks about the feast of Pentecost. And if you take the word Pentecost, penta, it means five. Penta in Hebrew means five. In cost or coste in the Greek, it means ten times. So five times ten is fifty, correct? I did learn something in school. Five times ten is fifty. The tens were always easy. I got them pretty good. But when the elevens come around, that was always... No, but, but Pentecost means 50. And, and they would celebrate the Feast of Pentecost in the Old Testament. They would celebrate 49 uh, days. And the next morning would be the day of Pentecost. And so the Bible said that, if you fast forward a little bit to the New Testament, the Bible said that when Jesus was crucified, Come on, somebody. Come on. When Jesus was lifted up from the earth and he was expanded between heaven and earth on, on a tree, he died. They took his body and they buried it in an old tomb. Oh, my. Three days later, he arose. BJ, he got up. He didn't stay dead. He got up. He arose. And the Bible said that he walked the streets of Jerusalem for 40 days. And what I love about the story, and I know y'all heard me say it, we just celebrated Resurrection Sunday 50 days ago. 
And I know y'all heard me say it then, but I'm going to say it again. When Jesus resurrected from the grave, it wasn't only Jesus' grave that was busted open, but all of the saints that accepted the Lord, yes, hallelujah, Lord. their graves was opened up, and Amen. they stood up out of the ground. Oh, Grandpa that they had buried a couple months ago, all of a sudden he was walking around in Jerusalem. Praise God, all the ones. You see, while well, Jesus' body was in the ground for three days, Jesus wasn't there. He went down in the lower parts of the earth uh, and begin to preach to the prisoners uh, all the ones that was from Adam to the cross uh, and he said I died for you uh, and if you'll accept my gift of grace uh, you can come out of this place and I'm going to take you to heaven yeah. Amen. Amen, bro. and he led a procession yeah. out of Shiloh and the devil looked at death and said, what's going on? And he said, this man named Jesus, he come down in here and he began to preach and he began to talk. And then he said, look at this is my friend that was hanging on the cross. Oh. And that man that deep on the cross said, listen, boys, everything that this man says, you better listen to. He said, I saw it all, Brother Randall. The thief on the cross said, yeah, I can testify. I watched him die. Hallelujah. But here he is preaching to you. Amen. And he led a procession out of Shiloh and into heaven. My gosh, in heaven. My goodness. Forty days, Jesus, after they resurrected, they walked Jerusalem streets. They walked the cobblestones of Israel and went around showing everybody with many infallible proofs. Uncle Jack, people that needed healing, they was healing. They was preaching the good news. Hey, Mary, bro. And everybody that saw him said, I thought you died. I thought you died. The two on the road to Emmaus, they were talking about how bad it was. And then Jesus showed up and they said, man, wasn't it like fire that was shut up in our bones? Well, let me get on past all of this. And Jesus, for 40 days, he walked the streets. But he told his disciples on the day that he ascended, which we celebrated last Sunday, Ascension Sunday, he said, tarry at Jerusalem for 10 days until I come. Or until the Spirit comes. Yeah. Until the help comes. Right. And the Bible said that it is important that I go away. Because if I do not go, I can't send the comforter. I can't send the help. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. Is anybody else in this house thankful for the sweet Holy Ghost? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, a lot of times people think, well, the Holy Ghost just gives you chill bones. No, that ain't what the Holy Ghost does. Right, Mary, Some on. people think, and they preach this, Brother Mike. That, I mean, I was told that, uh, y'all know I'm, I'm messed up. I grew up in a Pentecostal church. I went to a Baptist school, and, and I started pastoring at a Methodist church. <laughs> I know I'm back to Pentecostal. I don't know what you call it, brother. Uh, but I just call him a blood bought child of God. I don't do denominations. Denominations are dividing the kingdom of God. We're doing the day. You are sons and daughters of the most high God. That's all we need to know. There ain't going to be no Baptist in heaven. There ain't going to be no Methodist in heaven. There ain't going to be no church of God in heaven. Hallelujah. It is one church, and that's the church uh, of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah be to God. I want you to know the Holy Spirit didn't just come for the Pentecostal church. He come for anybody that would call on Him and say, Lord, here I am. Pour out of Your Spirit on me. I want the power. I want the anointing. I want the gift that You have, Lord. Amen. And you see, people, they, they... I hate to even call it out, but I'm going to. I was told when I was a child that I better not be going to that Pentecostal church. And let me tell y'all something first and foremost. Pentecostal is not a denomination. That's right. Pentecostal is a lifestyle. Pentecostal means that you operate in the gifts of the Spirit. You got Assembly of God, that's a denomination. Church of God, that's a denomination. But Pentecostal is not. It is a lifestyle. It is you operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and believing that the Holy Spirit is still manifest. Because there's a lot of people, let me tell you something, there's a lot of people that still preach today that when Jesus left here, all the, the gifts of the Spirit left here with him. I want you to understand something this morning. The Bible said Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I can tell you after the ascension, all through the Bible, they was going around laying hands on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Sometimes they didn't even have to lay hands.
hands on them. They would just preach the word Amen. and everybody in their congregation would receive the Holy Ghost and would begin to shout and, and speak in other tongues. And, and it's all through the book of Acts. It's all through the, the letters of Paul. And so I don't understand where people get that. Because the Bible said, I'm sending you the comforter. The 12 disciples ain't the only ones that went through this world. You think he's just going to send the Holy Spirit just to the 12 disciples on, and leave the rest of us out here as orphans? No. God said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Oh, my God. Come on, bro. I'm going to tell you who the Holy Spirit is. Yeah. And I told my wife last night, I'm trying my best not to say the Holy Spirit because when I call you by name, I don't say the Karen, do I? I don't say that. I don't say the Sonia, the Lester, the Tim. I don't say that. I say, Tim, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. When you put the Holy Spirit, it's kind of like you're saying it's a thing. I've heard people call the Holy Spirit it. Uh -oh. When it shows up, it's not an it. No. He's not in it. Let me put it that way. He is not in it. Amen. He is the third person of the Godhead, of the Trinity. You have the Father. Son and Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you something else right here. If you say Holy Spirit, you might be. Well, if you say Holy Ghost, you're more likely you're Pentecostal. There's some Pentecostal inside of you. I often wondered that. People said, Brother Chad, what's the difference between Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost? I said, well, they're one and the same. But, but if you have Pentecostal in here, then you talk the Holy Ghost. But if you are proper, say the Holy Spirit. Then you probably something else. You probably never been to a Pentecostal church. Because where I come from, they say, you got to catch the ghost. Y'all don't catch the ghost enough in here. I'm going somewhere else. Come on. I'm talking about this. When people want a move of God, listen, I want to experience him the same way the apostles experienced him. And Jesus said, you can experience me the same way I move for them, I will move for you today. My power is not done. I did not carry my gifts with me when I ascended into heaven. He said, I told you it is important that I go away because if I don't go, I can't send the comforter, Amen. the helper. But I had them tell me, you better not go to a Pentecostal church. And they're like dogs barking. I said, you better be careful. You better be careful who you're talking about. They said the only reason people falls out in the spirits go to the preacher eat onions before he come. I'm telling you. I mean, they was just putting it down. I said, you never talk bad about the Holy Ghost. As a child, I knew that much. You don't talk bad about the Holy Ghost. Mm. But they'll preach well. The Holy Spirit people just acts crazy. And I'm going to tell you something. It is one of the most divisive things in the churches of God today. It is the message of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost in the end times is the most divisive thing in the church world today. And I want you to understand something. There's a reason for that. Because the devil knows if the church ever gets a hold of the message of the Bible about the Holy Spirit and the power that they carry with the Holy Spirit, he knows he's done. Now, before I get too carried away, let me tell you. Hallelujah. He said, first and foremost right here, he said, if uh, I will pray the Father, he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, I was telling Sonia last night that you know that the Holy Spirit was actually all through the Old Testament as well. A lot of people don't believe that, Brother Matt. They say, well, no, the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, which is the church's birthday. Whoop, whoop. We ought to sing happy birthday to the church this morning. Amen. Ah, my, my. I'm talking about it's the church's birthday when the Holy Spirit come down. The church was born and they were thrusted into the heat of the battle. And they were ready because God had endued them with power from on high, Brother Bruce. Oh, man. Amen. People say the Holy Spirit would only come in Acts chapter 2, but that's wrong. You see, because the Bible said even in the Old Testament, back in, in the early books, in the books of Moses, he talked about Gideon. The Bible said that the Spirit of God come upon Gideon. 
King David, do y'all remember him in the Old Testament? The Bible said the Spirit of God come upon David. Do y'all remember a man by the name of Samson? The Bible said the Spirit of God come upon Samson and he went out and defeated all the Philistines as before. You see, before in the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost of God, hallelujah be to the Lord, he only come down and, and he would land on somebody for a little while, brother mine. He could just come and he could just he could rest on them. He would anoint them for a short period of time. But the Bible tells us something right here, that now God is going to do a new thing. Amen. The Bible prophesied in the Old Testament, he said that the latter rain shall be greater than the former. That's right. In Joel chapter 2, he said, In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Not just the Jews. Not just the Jews. All flesh. You see, in the Old Testament, he could just land on them and give them a little bit of power. But I'm going to tell you what happened on the New Testament, on the day of Pentecost. What we're worshiping, or, or not worshiping, what we're celebrating today, we're worshiping God for today. On the day of Pentecost, there's something new happened, Brother Bruce. It ain't new anymore as Brother Mike was singing. Oh, but on that day, it was very new. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm talking about 120 men and women went up into the upper room. It wasn't just the disciples. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Guess what? She wasn't Catholic. Amen. She was Pentecostal. Amen. Come on. But you ain't got to shout out there. That's all right. You'll find out in just a minute.